in Paris's death. Ain't the government of the government. But it's all you need. And God will hold us today. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, be with us this day and always that we may practice that which your Son did of laying hands on us. Let his hands be upon us that our hands may be upon our brothers and sisters. Let us touch his hem and know that everything will be all right, that we will be healed in mind and body and spirit, that we may go about and live life and live it abundantly for his name's sake. These things we ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise and sing.
I was up uh, meeting with the youth and I did not realize it got past my time. <laughs> we are this morning having the anniversary of the celebration of the anniversary of baptisms. So all those who are ready for that, the, your, the names are listed in the um, in your messenger. I'm going to invite you to come forward. And bring your parents, Becca, bring your parents along. <laughs> this with me, to faithfully bring our children to worship, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Very good. Sponsors and this congregation promised to nurture them, by the way, Pray for them in their new life in Christ. And uh, so we're going to remember our baptisms today. And I want you, as I say each of these, I'm going to talk about hearing first. And I want you parents to dip your finger in the water to make the sign of the cross on your child's ears that you may hear the good that you may hear the good news of Christ the word of life receive the sign of the cross on your ears pretty good okay that you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way now receive the sign of the cross on your eyes That you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips. <coughs> that you may dwell, that God may dwell within you by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your heart. That you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders. That God's mercy may be known in your works. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands. That you may follow in the way of Christ. Receive the sign of the cross on your feet. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Now we're going to light your baptismal candle. And when you were baptized, you received a candle like that and the, uh, the assistant minister said let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven and the congregation responded Let's see if we have that up there Here's what they said. 
We are proud that you are part of God's family and workers with us in the kingdom of God. So, let us pray. Wait, here we go. Congregation, go ahead and say that. Very good. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially, we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now receive this blessing. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgives us all our sins. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace with those around you.
like a stream in the desert. Soon all the world will see the living water is found in me. Just come to the well. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happen happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what he, they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Tell Atha, kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. 
he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. The grace and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's grace by, share God's peace by greeting those around you. Pardon? Oh. Then be seated. I'd like the young people to come forward. All right, we're going to play a game. I'm going to see, we're going to, this is an experiment. We're going to see how well you can see with your hands. All right? We're going to start with Jenea. Okay? You know what's in this bag? Have you, did you go up there and look in my bag and, and you didn't do that, huh? Okay. Then reach in and feel something and, and tell me what you think it is. <laughs> you said a Bible. Well, you are exactly right. That's usually sa safe if you find a book. This is the Bible I got at the last ELCA youth, ga youth gathering in 2012. Guess what? I'm going to get a new one this year. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, now how did you know that was a, a book? In this case, you even guessed it was a Bible. You felt it. You see? You can see with your hands. Isn't that a mirror? Uh, uh, can I see that? All right, Henry, you want to try? Okay. Don't look inside. There's something else in there. It's not, it's not a Bible. So reach in. <laughs> you were supposed to tell me what it was before you took it out, Henry. <laughs> Oh, well, guess what? It's a pencil with a funny thing on the, on the end. <laughs> okay. Grace, how about we have you try? What does it feel like? You have no clue. Well, you know what? There's two other things in there. Try, try one of the others. Well, pull them out. Yes, you said you said eyeglasses, and that's a pretty good guess. So what you're saying is that you saw with your fingers with your hand. Okay, the thing that you couldn't guess, the person at the early service said a person, but it is Donald Duck. The beak must have thrown you off. And then there was a rock in there too. I, no, I had that rock with that rock on it. Okay, that's good. My whole point is, isn't it amazing that with touch, we can see something in our mind. Our touch is that good. But touch was so important to, to Jesus that he touched, you know, a good Jewish person in Jesus' day wasn't supposed to touch anything dead. But he touched a little girl who was dead. And he said, 
little girl rise. And she was, was healed. She was brought to life. Then a woman who had a, was hemorrhaging. She, and anybody that had any kind of discharge from the body, like a sore or anything that didn't heal, they were unclean and they weren't supposed to touch anybody. She touched Jesus and she was made well. So Jesus thought touch was important. We see it's miraculous, okay? Jesus heals us. And what we pray for today is that Jesus would touch us today, okay? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of touch. We pray that you touch us. Heal us. Increase our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you didn't want to share the piece more than once. <laughs> I hope the rest of the service goes better. By the way, I, I didn't give you the announcements, so there's a couple of announcements I would like to make. One is uh, July 12th, that's a Sunday, between worship services, um, Cassie Demick, our council president, some members of the church council, and myself would like to meet with all parents with youth in particular to uh, get their input on our youth program, and we'd like to share what um, some of the exciting things that we have in mind and what's going to happen there. And we thought that that might be something that would be of interest to anyone, so you're all invited to that. That's Sunday, July 12th, between worship services. And uh, one other note, uh, Tracy put in the bulletin that Mick and I will be on vacation July 2nd through the 4th, or the, I, I believe she put. And let me show you how much vacation I'm getting here. Uh, we're leaving late afternoon after both Mick and I work, so we're leaving late afternoon on Thursday, so that's not really a vacation day. Friday is my day off, and Saturday is a national holiday. I think I deserve a holiday. <laughs> but I will be back next Sunday, so just keep that in mind. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, let, me, let me begin with a story. And it's a story that's told by Delmer Clinton. Delmer Clinton, I've uh, mentioned before, he is a Lutheran pastor, an ELCA pastor in North Carolina. And Delmer tells about a friend of his, a, another pastor friend of his, asked him if he would speak at their, on their stewardship Sunday. It was a time when they were going to uh, gather all the pledges together and uh, have commitment Sunday and do that at two worship services and then have a meal afterwards. And Delmer, when Delmer received the text that was going to be used in the worship service, it was a healing text, one of the healing stories of Jesus. So he said to his friend, you know, if we're going to use this text, we need to have a healing service. So let's put that portion of the liturgy in this service. And when they did, Everybody was surprised in the congregation that almost everybody came forward for anointing and prayer of healing. And uh, Dalmer says they, uh, the whole day was a great success. 
But then he said, a couple of weeks later, he gets a call from his friend, this pastor, and this friend said, you'll never believe what happened. A man came to me and he said, I came to your church on Commitment Sunday. It was the first time I had ever been in a Lutheran church. That was the Sunday I came. And he goes, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I live in a boarding home. I am a recent parolee from prison. And I made a vow that I would turn over my, uh, my life and, and start to, uh, leading a new life. And one of the things I promised to do was go to church. I do not drive. I don't have a car. I don't have a job yet. So the reason I came to your church was I could walk there. He said, I got there before the early service, before 8 o'clock, and I decided I was going to do everything that everybody else in this church did. So when it came to prayers for healing, I came forward. When it came to communion, I came forward. When it came to making a commitment, I put in a commitment card, and I put, I don't have a job, but I'm going to give as much and whenever I can. So he said he wanted the pastor to know that he did everything. And after the worship service, people started talking to him, and they invited him to the Sunday class, so he went to the Sunday class. And after the Sunday class, somebody said, you need to come to our congregational dinner after the second service. And he said, so I sat around and did some reading in the library until that dinner happened, and I went to the dinner. And lo and behold... I finally got home after three in the afternoon. Been gone all day. And he said, I opened the door to my room in the boarding home and I looked around and there I saw the ashtray filled with old cigarette butts flowing over. And I remembered, I haven't had a cigarette since before eight o'clock in the morning. He said, it's about time. I better have a cigarette. So he said he lit one up and he took a breath and he said it tasted terrible. He had to put that cigarette out right away. And then it dawned on him. He said, Pastor, when I came up for prayer for healing, you asked me, what do you want prayer for? And I said, my addictions. And it just occurred to me what had happened. But then he said to the pastor, except I liked smoking. He was cured of smoking, but I like smoking. And that brings us to our dilemma sometimes. Jesus is a healer, but sometimes we like the very things that God wants to deliver us from. We nurse those very things that God wants to deliver us from. We enjoy those things that are not good for us. So, yes, Lord, make me whole, but don't take away what I like. We, um, we see sometimes there's certain things even in our society that we tend to like and keep going for various reasons. Uh, some troubling things happened in our, our country the past two weeks. This week we've certainly had two, two decisions by the Supreme Court that uh, always, decisions by the Supreme Court are always divisive because there's always winners and always losers. But somehow we in this country manage to argue and debate and look at those divisive issues and the dust seems to settle and we, and we work it out. And we need, do need to pray over the divisiveness of those issues. But the other one, really the troubling one that really troubles, has shaken the soul of our nation was the murder of the nine a week from Wednesday in 
Mother Emmanuel AME Church in South Carolina. It really uh, has shaken us. And we can see how we do need still in our country to be healed of racism. I saw some hopeful things in the funeral this week of um, Reverend uh, Pinky when he, uh, and I'm going to quote, give you two quotes. When the right Reverend John Richard Bryant, who's the senior bishop of the AME Church, and I'm sure you've all heard this quote, he said of um, Dylan Root, the accused murderer, someone should have told the young man he wanted to start a race war, but he came to the wrong place. And I found that extremely helpful. And I think what Reverend uh, Bryant was trying to say there was it wasn't merely he came to Charlotte, but he came to the church. He came to the wrong place to start a race war. And from that has only come support and love, and even from the people, support and love came to the wrong place. And even our president in his eulogy said this, it, meaning the murder, was an act that drew on a long history of bombs and arsons and shots fired at churches. Not random, but as a means of control, a way to terrorize and oppress, an act that he, the killer, imagined would incite fear and recrimination, violence and suspicion, an act that he presumed would deepen divisions that trace back to our nation's original sin. And then I like what he said. Oh, but God works in mysterious ways. God has different ideas. He, the killer, didn't know he was being used by God. Used to maybe help us wrestle with racism and heal some of that. Well, our prayer should be, dear Lord, heal us. Heal our nation. And I don't know if you feel you should feel. I, I think sometimes if we would be honest with ourselves, we would understand that, yes, we do lead lives of desperation, but we do need that healing touch from Jesus. An example, uh, let, let's look at the text. Both people in the, the text were desperate people. Look at Jairus, a leader in the, sem, uh, in the synagogue, influential in the community. He has a name. Mark gives him, says his name is Jairus. By the way, the woman was inconsequential in the community, an outcast in the community, not given a name. But Jairus, a man of means, he came and repeatedly begged Jesus, please come and heal my daughter who is dying. Notice, he couldn't even get one of his servants to go and talk to Jesus and have Jesus come. He had servants. They came later to tell him, stop bothering Jesus, your daughter's dead. We see how desperate he was that he would, in a sense, humiliate himself by coming to an itinerant preacher, Jesus, and ask Jesus for help. Please help me. The woman, desperate, she was hemorrhaging for 12 years. A person who was unclean in society, touched, would dare to touch Jesus and make him unclean, but in the process of doing so, was made whole. And she told Jesus what she did when Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And then Jesus looked at this nameless woman and affirmed her and gave her a new status in community. 
called her daughter, told her she had a great gift of faith. Desperate people. I don't know if you feel desperate. We all should. Certainly in times in our lives, we all are. But we should be desperately praying for our nation, for liberty, for freedom, for the end of this divisiveness, especially racism. We should be looking into our hearts. I don't know what it is you need to be healed of, but we all desperately need it. And the good news, though, is that Jesus is here, willing and able to touch. Remember that um, old hymn, Abide With Me. It was uh, written by Reverend Henry F. Light. He was in the zenith of his career, and his doctor said, uh, I'm sorry, you have three weeks to live. And the reason he could be so certain of th three weeks is that tuberculosis was so common in that day, the doctor could pinpoint the week that you would die. He said, you have w three weeks to live. Henry Light went home and he wrote these words. I fear no foe at hand to bless. Ills have no weight, tears no bitterness. Where is death sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. And then the line of that hymn that says it all for Christians. It says, when other helpers fail and comforts flee, help, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Well, Jesus came. He did abide with Jairus and his daughter. He did abide. He was there for that woman. Healed her, but more importantly, just as importantly, called her daughter. Jesus is here for us. Wants to touch us, too. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings. Oh, 
voice of truth says do not be afraid and the voice of truth says this is for thy glory out of all the voices calling out to me i will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant with just a sling and a stone surrounded by the sound of the thousand warriors shaking in their armor wishing they had had the strength to stand but the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The giant keeps on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of And the voice of truth says this is for my glory Out of all the voices calling out to me I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth Gracious God we thank you for the Church of Christ. We pray that as we are strengthened in faith, we will be sent forth in peace. We pray for the healing of our nation, especially the healing of racial division. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, as we near our Independence Day celebration, fill our nation and its leaders with the spirit of freedom. Guide us that we may live into the ideals of liberty, healthy liberty, and into the ideals of justice for all. And may those ideals, the benefits of those ideals, the peace that they bring, be a benefit throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. For those who cry out from disease, distress, poverty, or powerlessness, we pray that you send your healing, especially to Pat and Bud Brown, John Burke, Mary Lou Cordero, Pat English, Karen Gallette, Dustin Jones, Frank Kimsey, Jim Lampy, Karen Larson's dad and cousin, Scotty Inman, Ellen Malcolm, Sherry Palermo, John Reynolds, Chris Snyder, Wayne Sproul, and Ann Wilbur. Are there any others? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of families and love. We pray that you bless the marriage of Brian and Jordan Swabauer, who were married yesterday. And we pray that you bless our children, especially those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism. Out of the depths, we call to you to give your resurrection life to all who have died. Comfort those who grieve, especially the family and friends of Danny Kinzer, of Alex Shives, Paul Shaner, Jeffrey Hansen, Richard Miller, and Rose McGills. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Different 
story, the voice of truth says do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says this is for my glory, and if all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth is full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your spirit that by this communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is re ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated. This is a body, this is a blood, broken and poured out for all of us. In this communion, we share in his love. This is a body, this is a blood, I will remember everything, Lord, that you've done for me, I won't take for granted the sacrifice that set me free. But I hunger and thirst for your love Come fill me today This is a body This is a blood Broken and poured out For all of us In this communion, we share in His love. This is a body. This is a blood. I will remember everything, Lord, that You've done for me. Don't take for granted the sacrifice that set me free. We hunger and thirst. 
for your love and your righteousness. We long for your presence here, Lord. Be with us again. This is a body. This is a blood. This is a body. This is a blood. Broken and poured out for all of us. And in this communion. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift of life. We thank you that you have drawn us close to your heart through this. Touched by your love, touched by your healing, help us to be a, pre a healing presence, your healing presence, wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. And this world can be cold and bitter Feels like we're in the dead of winter Waiting on something
something better But am I really gonna hide forever Over and over again I hear your voice in my hands Let your light shine, let your light shine For all to see Start a fire in my soul Fan the flame and make it grow So there's no doubt or denying Let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see That it's you, that it's you that we need Start a fire in me You only need a spark to start a whole place It only takes a little faith Let it start right here in Springfield So these old walls will never be the same Over and over again voice in my head they need to know i need to go spirit won't you follow my heart now start a fire in my soul fan the flame and make it grow so there's no doubt or denying let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you that it's you that we need start a fire Bye. 